Hey, welcome back to the fight. Our next guest is a three-time Olympic gold medalist and a longtime member of the U.S. women's national soccer team, who was just recently named the team's first ever general manager, Kate Markgraf. Kate, welcome to the fight. Ah, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to chat with you. Yeah, it's so awesome having you here tonight. Kate, I want to talk about the Olympics, but first, let's go back. What led you to choose, choose Notre Dame? I think it was because I knew I'd be challenged in all aspects of my life if I went up there. Uh, I felt there were other universities that maybe wouldn't challenge me on the athletic field. There were other options that I have that maybe wouldn't challenge me in the classroom. And I just felt when I got on the Notre Dame campus that there was something different. So I felt I always need to push myself and the best way to do it is to find a place that's gonna force you to change. And that's what Notre Dame is to me. It's a disruptor of complacency. It's a generator of your talent and amplifies your skill set, but also highlights where you might be lacking. And so I didn't know that at the time. I just had it in my gut that something's different about this place. And so I chose Notre Dame and I couldn't be more thankful for that. Yeah. During your time as a student athlete at Notre Dame, you were a three-time NSCAA All-American, Big East Defensive Player of the Year, Defensive MVP of the NCAA Final Four, co-captain, and a winner of a national championship. What stands out to you of all of those accomplishments? And what do you really know, remember I mean, most? I, uh, Molly, I think you can probably speak to this, is that you don't know... <laughs> that it's a big deal. Like you're nobody, right? Like you're around your teammates to just make fun of you the entire time. And that, that humble discontent is what makes you successful. Right? So uh, none of that stands out. What stands out is the locker room. What stands out is the silly dances, um, the extra 15 pounds that came from Burger King that they gave me as a senior gift. Uh, and <laughs> just all the unhealthy diet habits that we had in terms on the soccer team during that time. Uh, we didn't really have that much of a nutrition, so I don't think working with us. Mm -hmm. So thankfully that's changed a lot. Um, happy to always contribute to Notre Dame to help advance the high performance aspect of all our athletes. But um, I'm definitely not running any marathons and qualifying for the Olympics on my first time. I don't know if you know anyone that might've done that. Uh, I, I don't know. You might be might be thinking of someone else. Um, yeah, yeah, but, probably. But, okay, right after graduating from Notre Dame, you played 12 years on the national team, winning a World Cup in 1999 and three Olympic medals after that, which is insane, <laughs> just absolutely insane. I've always wanted to know what it feels like when you're standing on the podium with the medal while they're playing the national anthem and raising the flag. Just what goes through your mind during that moment when you have reached the highest level of your sport? Uh, it's just pure joy. I mean, the intrinsic happiness that you feel because you finally achieved a milestone that you'd worked your entire life for has been realized. And so that was fantastic. Honestly, I don't even remember. It's almost like you black out. It's you're just in the zone and you're just, for me, I am singing, but someone might call it screeching the national anthem because I love to sing it. I love going to other countries. Anthem. So uh, I've just practiced, uh, I just focus on that, not messing up the words. I know they might age. So then you go on. That's it's really just a culmination of all those years of hard work that's put together in that one moment of celebration with these teammates that you battled blood, sweat, and tears that creates a bond that is really hard to replicate with normal people. Uh, so it's it's a very memorable experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, as someone who hasn't gotten to have that Olympic moment just yet, that's really inspiring and incredible to hear. Um, so in 2019, following another World Cup win for the women's national team, you actually became the team's first general manager. What are your responsibilities as a GM? And how does being a former player inform your new role on the management side? Well, that's a good question. I think I bring a player-centered approach to managing the team. I treat players and coaches and athletes and everyone that works with us the way that I would want to be treated. 
And the benefit of having a player in that role is you get the opportunity to see it through their eyes and then to make decisions based on that. Because in the end, an athlete's life, like your career at Notre Dame and anyone that's a student athlete, is you want to realize your potential. And you're going to need that safety net around you, whether it's high performance, medical, coaching, you know, data analytics. So you're going to need that all working on your behalf to help that player gain that marginal 2% to be better than the opponent. Because when you get to our level, there's very small differences between one another. So that's really my main job. But I'm also head of women's soccer for the, the entire United States. So it's building every single one of our youth teams up and trying to make sure that we're successful for the next 10 years from the national team level, but making sure that we have access points to enjoy our sport for anyone, even someone that's interested in the recreational aspect of the sport. Yeah, well, Kate, I'm looking forward to seeing what you have in store with the U.S. women's national team in 2021 as we head towards Tokyo. And thank you so much joining us on the fight tonight.